Hey everybody, welcome back to Civilization Sunday. Now, if you remember last week we finished off our Seven Seas campaign, and this week we're starting in something new. We're going to play Civilization Beyond Earth, which is a game released in 2014 that kind of serves as like Civilization 5.5, if you will. Um, it's a really cool game, totally different take on the Civilization franchise, and we're going to jump right in and do a little campaign there in the Civilization Rising Tide scenario. So, thank you so much for tuning in. We really appreciate it each and every week. Love to see you here. And without further ado, let's get dangerous. We have debated the nature of the object since planetfall, but it wasn't until it began to slow and change course that we were certain it was a ship. A ship from Earth, launched long after we thought it was impossible, its course clear and its arrival imminent. Celebrations swept the colony in anticipation of reunion with our brethren. All attempts to contact the vessel, however, were met with silence. They were either unable to respond or did not wish to. As we watched its approach, we prepared for any eventuality. Now, the wait is over. Hey everybody, welcome back to Civilization Sunday. In this, uh, we are actually going to start a new campaign in a new game. We are playing Civilization Beyond Earth. Uh, the basis here is that, let's say the end of Civ 5, you reached that space race victory and you set off to a new planet and this is kind of what that looks like. So what we're going to do, we are going to um, set the difficulty. At, let's say, yeah, Mercury is fine. Standard game pace, small planet. Sure. And because we're doing rising tide, I think we'll do the North Sea Alliance. So, OK, so for, for those who are not familiar with uh, beyond Earth. So you have, instead of like in civilization, in the traditional civilization, where you would select your starting civilization, here we are all representatives of planet Earth. So we have several different things that we're going to go through, which you'll see down here uh, on the lower right. So first is our sponsor. So this is who is sponsoring our colony ship to go off into space so uh, each of the different sponsors has their own perks so this is kind of like when you're selecting a civilization and each civilization has like a unique unit or a unique building or something like that this is this is how this works so i've previously played this <laughs> back in like 2014 uh you know 10 years ago when it came out and i think i either played as the pan-asian cooperative or Franco-Iberia. I know I've played as Cavithian Protectorate only because, <laughs> or Cavathon Protectorate, only because I have achievements for a victory as the Cavathon Protectorate. But 
Uh, we've got these new sponsors too. So one of them is the North Sea Alliance, and the other is Chengtu, and there's a third one that I don't remember uh, as being an added on bonus. Maybe it's Alphala um, with the new expansion. And the new expansion, Rising Tide, gives you a lot more uh, ocean related stuff. So we've picked our sponsor. Now we get to choose our colonists. So a variety of different colonists here, culture, production, energy, food, and science. I think this music is some of the best music to in the game. I'm going to have to turn it down for the video. Um, I think I want to pick... Well, I think let's go science. I think that'll help us. Um, and, and you'll see why that science is going to matter differently. Uh, and then we get to choose our spacecraft. So you can see that depending on the way that our spacecraft is outfitted, we get different stuff. So I think I might... I like this continental surveyor. Do coasts on the map. So that'll reveal coasts across the entire map. Um, which will be cool for figuring out how I want to plan and grow my civilization. Um, retrograde thrusters is not bad at all. And then alien nests. So there are aliens on these planets that are, they kind of serve like barbarians in a way and that they're, uh, an AI controlled, but they're not another player. They're like NPC, uh, kind of, um, I think I'll go continental surveyor. And then you get to choose our cargo, right? So basically, do we start with a worker, with a soldier, um, bonus population, a clinic, or I'm going to start with laboratory with pioneering technology. So that's one of the big techs in the tech web. All right. And now the last thing, we had to choose our planet. So uh, a Terran world is a few large land masses separated by oceans and smaller islands. A uh, protean world is one large ocean and one large continuous landmass. And then an Atlantean world is a more oceanic, uh, almost like an archipelago. And then you can do advanced worlds, which have all these, which no thank you. I'm not, I'm not ready for that. Um, I think I'll go for, well, yeah, I think, I think I'll go for a uh, Atlantean world. Because I have uh, kind of a more ocean-faring uh, sponsor, we'll say. So we're going to start there. And then, then here is the launch. Okay, so until the seeding, Duncan Hughes' proudest achievement was the development of the water-based floating cities known as the Arks. His experience as a longshoreman and naval engineer was instrumental in designing the concept, and it was his tireless commitment to the project that saw the first successful prototype go into production and eventual testing in the North Sea. The ARC program was an instant success and revolutionized global trade. Hello, I am the Advanced Integration and Simulation Resource, or Advisor. I am equipped to introduce you to the basic systems that will guide your development on this new planet. Additionally, I can provide strategic advice based on situations you encounter. How would you like me to proceed? I'm going to say new to beyond Earth. Uh, I'll pretend it's for for you, my audience. But the reality is I probably haven't played this game since 2016. Um, part of why I wanted to dust this off is because it's coming up on its 10 year anniversary. And I think that's really awesome. Um, and I'm going to do full guidance because you know, more info is better. Suggests that our society could evolve in three very different directions or affinities, based primarily on which technologies we invest our research in. As we level up in a specific affinity, we will gain benefits which will help us adapt to life on this planet and unlock powerful upgrades to our military units. Okay, so the way that this game works too is that. In addition to having a number of different victory conditions, the way that you do in civilization, traditional, where you can be, you know, domination or cultural, religious or space race or whatever, you have these affinities 
that are kind of like, um, I don't know how to explain it, like a, it's not like a talent tree, but it's, it's kind of like your quest line, like your larger quest line. So I've played before where, um, you do a supremacy and it, it you end up being kind of like cybernetic like you figure out mechanical cybernetic ways to deal with the alien world um purity is where you figure out ways to keep out all the alien influence and basically like create your own little separated domes that are quarantined and all that stuff and then harmony is where you kind of create something new, a little more symbiotic. So I might go harmony route a little, just because I think that's kind of fun. Uh, you get like the alien-human hybrid sort of situation. Of the planet's surface indicate an abundance of native life forms, but no advanced intelligence. These life forms do not appear to be overtly hostile, but I would recommend caution when deciding to engage with them. I have also detected what appear to be large abandoned structures of unknown origin. Use the Explorer unit to investigate these sites. There may be valuable artifacts left behind. Okay, so there are native life forms um, that are not overtly hostile, but maybe Select a suitable location for our people to make they don't land. want us hanging out with this them. This will be the site of our first great city. Select a plot within the red border to land. Okay, and then so these are algae. So if we get if we land here, we land on land and if we land here we land in the ocean and i know that i know that um can we see now that's it what are these i know that um if we have a base on the ocean we can move it later so let's select here. We'll be right on the coast. Aquatic cities work just like land cities, but with two key differences. First, aquatic cities do not grow with culture. They only claim the plots adjacent to the city when the city is founded. Instead, to claim new territory, aquatic cities require their second special ability. Aquatic cities can move. These okay. cities travel around the map. Whenever the city moves, it claims the tiles adjacent to its new location. This is how aquatic cities gain their territory. They can still buy plots with energy, however. Okay. Oh, I guess we don't have gold. We we have energy. So cities come from building outposts and sheltering them until they grow into a city. So so that's kind of fun. All right. So this is what? This is an explorer unit. And we have all these. Oh, 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 we have our map. Okay. So we have coastlines revealed. Oh, let me move. Oh, what am I doing? I'm pressing the wrong buttons. Okay. So we have coastlines. We can't see the, the insides, but we have coastlines all around. So that's really cool. So that's what we wanted, right? That's what we were trying to figure out. Okay, where's my city? And what did I accidentally just tell this explorer to do? I pressed a button. Now I don't want to delete it. Automated, wake. Oh, I must have put it to sleep. Do nothing, move. Okay, whatever. So then we have these. Uh, what is this here? Oh, fire axe site. Okay, so that's a resource. And then here. We have these little things, these are resource pods. So those are like, I guess they serve like a goody hut, uh, but we're not gonna call them goody huts. And then what's this purple thing? Float stone. And this is Xenomass. Okay, so this is algae, right? This is algae we can use for food. This is Xenomass. I don't really know what this is. Float stone. All right, so let's, and what is this glowing stuff? Miasma. Okay, so we've got our NSA Explorer. We are gonna wake you up. 
What happens if we move you here? Into the miasma. I don't know. Let's find out. Maybe he'll die. Um, okay, so we're gonna... We're gonna choose our production. So, we don't have any wonders or anything yet. Clinic. I think clinic would be good to start. But old earth relic gives us culture. So our city doesn't grow with culture. So what value is culture? Culture helps us develop virtues. Oh, the and virtues these are the virtues. You choose the virtues that will shape your civilization. Ooh. You spend your accumulated culture to acquire them. The deeper you go in each row or column, the more bonuses you will earn. Okay. So this is like health, um, tech, energy, production, military strength. Okay. Cool. We can't, and we don't have anything yet, right? We don't have any points. So let's go back to our city. Okay. And for energy, we can buy these territories. Perfect. So let's choose our production. Um, what is the health? Your colony ha health is five. It has bonuses, which get better as health improves. Nine positive from all resources, four negative from all resources. It may be health is our, f like our food. And this would be like a farm or granary. And then what capital plus two? What is capital? Well, let's build an old earth relic because it's cheap. <laughs> we'll just do that. Do that to start in seven turns, old earth relic. And then let's choose our research. So this is, the this is overwhelming. The bird's eye view of the technologies that may be discovered and how they are connected. Technologies come in two types, branches and leaves. Branches represent broader technological ideas and cost less research. Leaves are more specific and are more expensive. So, an example uh, would be like habitation, right? And then another branch would be genetics. And then a leaf would be under genetics, alien life form. So that's a little bit more specific. And then that has a green harmony stripe on it, which means we earn harmony affinity points. So. By studying genetics and then studying alien life forms, we get a better understanding of the world around us and how we can work together. Um, and then we can filter, it looks like, by different subjects or search for a specific term, which is nice. So, holy crap. So what we picked was pioneering as our... Uh, starting bonus kind of so we already have this technology and then planetary survey we could do which I think is critical for us because this is what lets us move over aquatic tiles so this is kind of the a big deal for us in general because uh, that's part of our part of our deal and then economic advisors saying chemistry so we can research anything connected to what we already know. So I can't go research augmentation because I haven't gotten there yet. But these purple highlighted ones are things we can uh, research. I can't do cognition, but like I can do chemistry. So I think I'll queue up chemistry next after planetary survey. <clears throat> and then probably genetics after that. So that'll give us a good little start here. Uh, yeah, so we'll get we'll get that going. So, okay, and here are our different victory types. So this is our quest log, and I guess we can get different quests throughout. That's kind of cool. Oh yeah, okay so. One of the things we can get are different quests. So they're like little minor objectives that we can do where like for strength and decay, we have uh, these little different things we'll do that help us proceed toward a victory. Cool. 
So these are the different victory types. Transcendence, um, which is our ability to kind of connect to the whole planet. So then our goals are research transgenics, storm intelligence, nanorobotics, emancipation, which would be to launch a laser comm satellite, domination, control all the original capitals, promised land, launch laser comm satellite, and contact, discover the progenitor signal. Very cool. Okay, so one of the things I think I like transcendence. Um, so then these are our big three goals. And we'd have to develop a cognitive link. And then here are quests that will pop up here. So if we go back to our, uh, our science, then we'll be able to get a better understanding of how we can choose our research to go in the right direction. And this is our dude, Duncan Hughes. So he's our leader. Cool. Wait, what? Manage my personality traits? I'm sorry. Oh, what? We may have up to four personality traits, which provide benefits to your colony and then allow other leaders to make agreements with you. Okay, that's cool. So right now we are indefatigable and we have 50 more. Aquatics is a 50% more combat strength and costs less to move. So once I get enough diplomatic capital, I can uh, add personality traits so I can be more political or more domestic or whatever. That's that's cool. All right, I'll take it. And then my affinity, I don't have any affinities right now. So as I unlock more stuff, I can kind of move in a direction. And I may end up moving in like a weird direction where it's like this um, kind of in between, you know, two, two different things. All right, next turn. Let's see what the world has going on. Valuable materials from old Earth. Send a unit onto the resource pod to see what it contains. Okay, so there's another player. Uh, one of our units has walked into a pile of strange alien miasma. This miasma is toxic and will damage our units and equipment if they remain here. Until we understand this substance better, we should avoid it if possible. Okay. So our explorer is at 90 out of 100 hit points because I decided to F around and find out by walking into the miasma. Cool. So miasma is not good for us. Not yet. Who knows? Maybe eventually miasma will like give us extra riboflavin or something. Oh, what this are you? Okay. Ooh. Aliens are spawned in alien nests. We must decide whether we want to preserve them or eradicate them. Destroying nests will cause aliens to become hostile, but it may be necessary for the safety of our people. To destroy a nest, move a worker, explorer, or any combat unit to the nest and use the pillage action. If we avoid nests, however, the aliens will be much more likely to avoid us. If we then absorb nests into our colony, then or to territory, the aliens will eventually become friendly to us. Okay, cool. So this is not a hostile unit, necessarily. But maybe we don't want to tangle with it. Maybe, maybe we want to leave it alone. As long as it leaves us alone, that's kind of my philosophy. As long as they leave us alone. City that is able to move. Moving water cities allows them to claim the plots adjacent to their new location and is the primary way to expand water territory. You should try moving your city towards valuable terrain or resources. So this is that's cool. How do they move? Select move and then select the plot you wish to move to. 
Um, okay, okay. So, so we select, we make our production to move. Oh, move city five turns. Okay. And then we can move like to here. Cool. Okay, I'm not going to do that yet. I'm happy with our current production, which will do an old earth relic in three turns. Although, maybe I can uh, queue movement. No, I don't think I can queue the, mu the movement. Then we'll, we'll finish up our old earth relic and then we'll move to here and see what happens. I don't know if that means that these tiles uh, come with us and then we have a new grid or if this extends us so that we have a longer grid. So that'll be interesting. Oh, what are you? You're little bug dudes too. Okay, quest received. Throughout the game, your actions will trigger different quests that can unlock bonuses for your people. Open the quest log to see what's available to you and check back. Okay. Okay, so we have an objective of creating an outpost. So the first step was to to research pioneering, which we did already. So yay, step 1 of that quest is done, and now we can construct the mobile machinery needed to found an outpost so we can build a colonist unit. So if I fight these guys, I will be defeated. Can I... There's bugs here, but are they not like sad bugs? Ooh, what are you? You look like a little research station or something. What is this? Derelict settlement. Ooh, okay, so that's in miasma. So maybe I can move in, move out. Um... Okay, so we have research pioneering. So then our next thing here in Deep Castle is to build a colonist. Okay, cool. Can I not... Oh, production queue. Yes, I want to activate the production queue. Okay. So let's, yeah, let's build a colonist and then we will move the city to here. That'll be, that'll be our queue, right? No, does it override? It overrides it. Okay. So that's like an action. So let's finish the old earth relic. Man, okay. And then colonist. Okay, we'll do that. We'll do that. We'll just leave it alone. Oh, and our city now has two citizens. Awesome. So we're working the algae uh, biomass here. Okay, explorer. God, I gotta stop WASDing. Oh, okay. So now this has a little expedition thing. So we can go here and construct an expedition so we're gonna like search here for stuff we're in the miasma though so the survey takes time but are we losing health while we're in that oh yeah we are but he's gonna die um how do you heal Fortified till healed. I don't want my guy to die while he's doing an expedition. Oh. Okay, so we have aliens near Deep Castle. Do we want to hurt them, though? We don't necessarily want to hurt these guys, right? We just have the option to. Oh, quest decision. Activists calling themselves a private militia have made a citizen's arrest. The criminal in question is a professional biologist by the name of Pierre Petrio, 
to the activists a rogue researcher tampering with a dangerous foreign substance. The sample scientist experimenting with miasma in the privacy of his own residence. Um, I, okay. They claim the scientist was using his own body. So they arrested him and they brought him to the doors. I think I'm gonna, yeah, I think I'm gonna free him. Because, you know, we need to figure out how to work within this world. Okay. It's not the role of civilians to take the law into their own hands. I completely agree. So now we have to build a patrol boat unit. Oh, to help restore order. Cool. Okay, so now we've got a couple of different quests. So we have an exploration quest with the Beating Heart Society. And then we have the Found an Outpost quest. But nothing domestic. Okay, cool. And an alien life forms within our attack range. But I, I don't need to attack them. Oh, <gasps> okay, so we moved. Ooh, okay, so it does expand that territory out. That's cool. Okay, I like that. Yeah, as long as they're not gonna attack me, I'm not gonna attack them. Oh, okay, so we we moved, we expanded the territory, and now we're working on a colonist, which is like a settler, right? That's gonna be, that's gonna be what that is. Okay, so I'm all healed up. An expedition. I want to to do an expedition, but I don't want to get hurt. Well, why don't we send our explorer to this? Go go over to this resource pod and see what's in there. Maybe we'll, like, learn archery or something. Oh, we've got enough culture that we can develop a virtue. Okay. So let's look. Plus... 50% experience from combat, plus 10% food retained after a city's population grows, plus 10% science when healthy, plus 10% production toward buildings. I am going to go... Hmm. Because then what's our next thing? 30% from expeditions, speed towards outpost, free worker, towards military... And then energy, energy, production toward wonders. I think I want to go knowledge. Okay. Because right now we're healthy. <laughs> I say with such certainty. Right? We're, con we're healthy because we have more health than we have negative health. And... Man, just keep hopping miasma to miasma. Ooh, somebody else is landing. I love that it says fire access. Okay, so this is another civilization, I guess? Maybe we uh, need to compete with them for, for turf here. I like that it said processing turn for minor powers. How insulting would you feel? Or how insulted would you feel if you were called a minor power? All right. So inside the resource pod, we found a collection of goods and luxuries from old earth that your people never thought they'd see again. These rally and refocus your people, providing 25 culture. And we got a guess, a uh, quest received, a guest received. Our sponsor had the foresight to send resource pods ahead of our expedition to be waiting when we arrived. Part to a large research instrument and we found in the pod. The other pieces are probably around somewhere. Okay, cool. So we got more culture. Does that mean we get another thing? Okay. I think... I think I'm going to go might because especially early stages, the XP is so important. Like when you only need 10 XP to level up, if you got six instead of four from a single fight, that matters a lot. 
All right. So let's kind of go over in this direction and see see who popped up on our in our area. Man, the, okay. So these guys are kind of. Uh, I mean, as long as they're not mean to me, right? I can let them be. If they start attacking, though, All that's no bueno. Inherent value. And establishing the exact dollar value of the property should be a priority. <laughs> okay. So we just discovered a technology to let us do what we can already do. But thermohaline rudder lets us move faster. Cool. Okay, so we'll have a colonist in four turns. What I would like is to get someone on the other side here. So I might send them across and then Aquatic City there. Oh, they're leaving. What the heck was that? Okay, now I have to explore. You have to go over here. Oh, another person's landing. I mean, are these other sieves? Is that the... Is that the thought? Oh, what is this? A canyon. Okay. Ooh! Alright, Pan-Asian Cooperative. Uh... Neutral? What are your traits? First wonder in every city is free. Whoa. Okay. Cool. Hello and welcome. What are you? You're a worker. Awesome. I'm going to go over here and take that resource. Okay. This is, uh, this is fun. Man, I'm going to get those alerts every time, right? Because they're like surrounding my city, but I am not attacking them. I'm being friendly. Man, but I do love that miasma, don't I? <laughs> I think we're gonna have to go, um You can found an outpost with your colonist. Outposts eventually grow into cities. An outpost will prosper when founded in a location with plentiful food. So choose a location with food producing resources or grassland if possible. Move your colonist to a fertile location and found an outpost. Okay, we have a colonist. We have a recommendation to move here uh, for some reason. So let's move our colonist there. I think I'm going to have to become Harmony just because my dudes are like obsessed with the miasma. Launch into orbit. To launch it, select the unit and click its action button. Once launched, it will have an area effect on the tiles beneath it until it deorbits. Oh. Okay, so inside the resource pod's a basic satellite still intact and with enough fuel to reach escape velocity, a free solar collector is now ready. What the heck is a solar collector? Launch an orbital unit. So we we select it and we activate it. What the heck is an orbital unit? A temporary orbiting unit that provides offensive, defensive, and support capabilities. Okay. So we select the solar collector and uh, launch it. Let's launch it like here. I don't know. Is this the area of effect? We'll launch it here. Okay, so now all around us is something that's collecting energy? It'll stay in orbit for 60 turns. Okay, cool. This, this is orbital view. It displays the effect areas of units that are in orbit. Effect areas cannot overlap, so it is useful to plan launches ahead of time. This view also shows your launch coverage area. 
An orbital unit must be launched over a tile with coverage. Coverage can be extended by constructing city buildings. Cool. We've discovered a group of hydrocoral. Oh, that's this up here. strange plant-like creatures that grow over the They're dangerous to fight, so use ranged attacks on them. They will expand relentlessly if not. Okay. Um Oh yeah, miasma, miasma. Okay, so don't fight it head on, but but maybe a little pew pew action. This is a war. Oh, and it's an explorer. Okay. Okay, I'm ready for our next production. Let's finish off the. Um... Oh, wait, did we build it? What were we building? Weren't we, what were we building? I can't think of it now. We must have finished it. Let's build a clinic. Oh, here we go. Let's show city buildings and wonders. Oh, we did build the old earth relic. Okay, good. Why we can sell buildings? Okay, that seems wacky. I can't imagine selling the building. Oh, quest decision. My goodness. Okay. Our relic has provoked an ideological split among our citizens. Some believe the old earth relic is instrumental as a source of solace for the grief people feel over their lost world. They want it left in reverent peace as a shrine. Others think it represents a valuable repository of traditional wisdom that must be studied and displayed publicly if humanity is to embrace their new home. Okay, so relics are free maintenance or open it to the public. I think it should be open to the public so that people can see it and remember it. Yeah. All right, well, I'll, I'll let her deal with the hydrocoral issue. Okay. And you're building the clinic. And I can develop another virtue. I think I kind of want all these top-level virtues. And then we'll go deeper into stuff later. But I do want to move the city. I just I don't know. That needs your attention. Oh. Okay. Keeping your citizens healthy is key to productive colony. Many aspects, including production, growth, research, and intrigue, are improved while you're healthy or penalized if you're unhealthy. Additional citizens make your colony more unhealthy, while virtues in some buildings provide positive health. Okay, so... Oh, now that we're a little bit larger... Right, so now it's our, a city of three. Our health is a little reduced. Yeah, I want to go right here for my colony. So maybe in two turns I'll have that set up. So, Deep Castle, we now have three citizens. So, we gotta. I think I want to move again. I don't know what this is. To just keep expanding our territory. Okay. Right, meanwhile, they're moving too. Okay. So I can't build right here, but if I build here, will I absorb the nest? Isn't this where the nest is? Yeah. 
Okay. Oh, I see the Hydra Coral expanding. All right, this is fun. Oh, yeah, move on this turn and build it. And then, then they'll be friends. Build, build, build. Build. Can you build, colonist? Found outpost. Okay. Recent combat actions have agitated the alien life. Unlike animals on Earth, aliens on this planet operate as a hive mind. Attacking one oh. people would lead to anger and reprisals from aliens all across the world. For this reason, I advise caution when engaging local aliens in combat. Okay, so we provoke one alien, which is why I haven't been attacking uh, from Deep Castle. So we provoke one alien, it might provoke others. Uh, we founded an outpost. It will soon grow to a full city, but we have to protect it. So we received a soldier unit. So I'm just going to move the soldier unit onto here. Maybe each turn we get another thing. So it'd be cool if we like became friends with them. That would be nice. Oh man, there's so many aliens around. So I'm just gonna... Can I alert? I don't need my soldier to explore. I don't want him to attack. Alert. We'll just make them ready. Ooh, resource pod. You will go here. Cool. And that'll help me with another quest, right? If I get that resource pod done. Oh, here comes another person. Okay. So, while as much as I want harmony with the aliens, I'm totally okay not being harmonious with others. <laughs> so, just so we're clear on that. Um... Yeah, we're just going to fortify you here on it so that nobody attacks it. And I think as long as I'm not attacking them, they won't attack me, right? That's that's my understanding. Oh, we moved. The solar collector is still there collecting solar. Um, so patrol boat. Trade depot. Okay, so I was building a clinic, so let's finish the clinic off. And that'll help with our health. But now we've expanded a little bit, so that's good. All right, resource pod searched. We found a portable reactor and fuel source inside the resource pod. We were able to activate it and we got 40 energy, which is like gold. Um, all pieces of the instrument are accounted for. Our scientists will make good use of this instrument sent from Earth. Ooh, we got a 35 science, which means we researched a technology, great. So, the new technology we researched is chemistry, so then that should automatically move us in the web to genetics, right? Oh my gosh, it's so dizzying. But we finished this habitation block, so that moved us to genetics. We got chemistry down, so eventually we can do this. But now we have genetics that we're working on. Okay. And then... You know, after genetics, we'll see where we go. Maybe organics is a good way to go, or biology. Um, yeah. Awesome. Oh, and here's a survey. But this is a nest, so I don't want to hurt it. Oh, and there's aliens there, so I don't want to hurt them. This is fun. Hopefully everyone can just be friends. Oh, I made the corporation serve you. Hello, America. Uh, the American Reclamation Corporation. It's here to help. Cool. So one of the things I I like seeing in the other civs are the in other civilization games are the other civs across here. But I wanna play in starships. What the heck is that? I don't know what that is. Um, let's save our game. Cool. I want to talk to the other civs. Diplomacy? Ni hao. Ni hao. Let's discuss potential agreements. For diplomatic capital. I don't think I have any diplomatic capital. What do I have? 123. Nothing I can do yet. 
Hola, how can I help you? Hola, indeed. Change relationship. Okay. So we can... We don't have enough fear or respect from them to be allied. Okay. We're just gonna... Hasta luego there. All right. I don't like how much the environment hurts me, so that's why I'm probably going to go that harmony route. If the personality traits you currently have don't seem as useful anymore, you can exchange them for new ones. You have enough diplomatic capital to do this now. Visit the diplomacy section and see if any of the alternative traits are more attractive. <laughs> can you? <laughs> I'm just, I just want to apply this to real life. I want to like tell my kids, hey, if the personality you have doesn't seem useful anymore, just get a new one. <laughs> I it's just funny. It's just funny to me. Okay, let's go. Let's go to the diplomatic view and just see about changing my personality. <laughs> so right now. I don't know what this means. Like, this feels like it's going off screen. So, if I want to add... Oh, I don't have enough to change my personality. Not yet. But we're getting a little bit each time. Plus five per turn of personality. Oh, minor defeat. Oh, there's aliens on there. I didn't even see them. Okay, I'll move to here. Ooh, that's your explorer unit. Cool. When they're gone, then I'll move here. This is a nest, right? I just love the idea of... Oh wait, can I go here? Oh yeah, well, I'll make a plan to visit the remains. But just like, is your personality not useful anymore? Get a new one! Could you imagine that in real life? Okay, let's do an expedition. That's our big deal. Uh, okay, we have a new culture. So I'm going to do this expeditions because I'm going to do an expedition next turn. And a quest decision. All right. Several new ventures wish to establish their operations near our territory, and they provide different services that may be useful to us. Farbase 1 provides two energy and two science to any city that establishes a trade route. Oh, this is like a city-state. Uh, Kia Gungun provides two culture and two science to any city that establishes a trade route. I'll say Kia Gungun. Let's get that culture going. You okay, so you can establish trade routes with stations to receive various supplies that your people may need. Oh, only one city per colony may trade with a station at a time. Okay, so where are you? You're over there. Okay, so next turn we get a clinic, and then I'm going to move and expand a little bit. Oh, but do I have to stay next to the coastlines? Well, I can move here. Either way, that's that's helpful. Okay, cool. These are like city states, kind of. I apologize for keep putting everything in in those sorts of terms, but uh, that's just how I'm being relatable. Okay, so we're expanding. Look at that. I got mad at second. I was like, "What? Ark is getting near us? No, it's just us expanding." So we're slowly expanding. I'm hoping that we take this. That would be really cool. All right, we have got it. So let's move. Um, Where should we move? I kind of want to move here, right? Can we do that? Let's move here and expand out bump these out a little bit but our health needs to be addressed like the clinic helped offset it but we just also went up in size so that's messing with it okay so we've got expeditions going on here city is moving growth is happening in two turns 
There's not a lot for me to do. Just click next, next, next. Oh, quest received. We're making enough diplomatic capital each turn to start an agreement with one of our neighbors. They have many services that could be valuable to us. Okay. So we can either change a personality trait <laughs> or make an agreement with one of our neighbors, but we have a new quest. So, a mysterious encrypted transmission was received from an unknown origin. After some considerable effort has been decoded, the clear text reads, The cult per cell requires infrastructure for covert operations. Should you choose to accept, you will be rewarded in time. So computing is what we've been asked to research for that quest. Um, computing is right there. I'm waiting for it to pop up in my brain. Oh, right here. Computing. Okay. Uh, that'll take us a bit to get to. We'd have to do ecology and then computing or engineering and then computing. So I think let's go. We're doing genetics right now, right? So then we'll do ecology and then computing. That'll help kind of spread, spread stuff around a little bit. These are, you know, spy agency is not a bad thing to have to spy on our neighbors. I love playing the espionage game. So that's good. Oh, an agreement recommendation. So... Wait, we discovered another nest? Did a nest just form like right now? Oh, we moved. Okay. I think, let's move again. And then we'll take that nest, right? That's what that means. This is the nest. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so we had a... We hit our 150. Yeah. So we can make some agreements with other leaders by spending some diplomatic capital. And we have some potential agreements being offered by other leaders. So the recommendation was this national land management from Pan-Asian. So I don't know what this means. It would cost us 50 per turn. Oh, look at this. I really like that. Right now we're neutral, so we get plus one. While we're cooperating, we would get a plus two. And then when we're allied, that turns into a plus three. Yeah. This agreement looks promising. Oh, wait. They were the one. Oh, they don't like us. Can I change my relationship? Let's be cooperative. Yes. Great. So we move in the right direction there. Okay, but now we had to spend some of that diplomatic capital. Okay, we can wait a few turns. No problem, no problem. <gasps> we ex expedition completed. There are many more sites like this to investigate around the world. Whoa. So you might want to consider building additional explorers to send to these locations. While exploring the progenitor ruin, several members of your expedition team were struck simultaneously with a powerful vision depicting the construction of a towering device larger than a city. The vision was so detailed, the expedition team was able to share some of its secrets with people as a whole, granting a free level up in an affinity. Whoa. Okay. Oh, and that must have pushed us to complete genetics. Okay. So... We have a free affinity level. I'm going to level up Harmony. We have no points in the others. Okay. What does that mean? Uh, wonder what life was like on Earth when the whole atmosphere is breathable. Relatable. So this gives us level 1 Harmonies reached. New upgrades available for our units. 
So, like our explorer because unit. You've earned an affinity point in either purity, oh. supremacy, or harmony. You can now choose an upgrade for your soldier unit. Once you choose, an oh, upgrade, your soldiers will instantly adopt this upgrade and change appearance. You can upgrade what? Unit types as you earn higher levels of affinity. Okay. Where's our soldier boy? All right, soldier. You. Wakey, wakey. You get an upgrade. Oh, here we go. Oh. I may be able to assist you. All right. Oh yes. Okay. So we received uh, level one. We can upgrade. We always have two choices, so we can choose those two perks like combat strength. Okay. So we have like a talent tree. For our soldier. So we can choose a perk. Uh, plus 15% when attacking, plus 4 heal when not embarked. Let's choose this one. Let's heal it faster. Okay, and our patrol boat also gets something. Um, ooh, okay, we'll do this. Cutter... Yeah, we'll choose this one. That's really cool. So now we have a, a marine and a cutter. And then submarine. We haven't we don't have any submarines yet. Okay, so now our dude is a marine. And then if I go to make a soldier, it will automatically be a marine now. That's really cool. Oh man, there's miasma all around you. Oh, but I have no more expedition modules. But if I return it to the city, I get a new a new supply of expedition modules. Okay, cool. Well, let's just keep exploring around. And I'm just going to keep putting you fortify. I guess we're just still waiting. This is a weird a weird thing to just like keep waiting for it to grow on its own. Oh, I wanted to go here. The alien's just going to keep going back and forth. I know it. All right. Another quest. Okay. I traded my life for my leg when I met the great worm. Now, with all the fury and courage uh, this cripple can bring to bear, I hunt, I hunt the earth drinker. I hunt the worm. Oh, well, that's... Is that the like Duncan's arc? Is uh, to attack the worm. Okay, since opening our clinic, populace has been split by an ideological divide. Securing and improving our new territory has put a great strain on both military and civil workforces. Both contend hazards that they face should be offset by state-sponsored health care. Our fledgling colony does not have the resources to do both. I think our civil workers are more in need right now. We're not trying to fight. Yeah. And you know what? We have a volunteer military, so sorry. Um, okay, domestic. Do we have something on the victory site? No, domestic. Oh, we have completed quests there. Cool. Worm killing, so that's kill a worm, research computing. Uh, build a patrol boat unit. Okay, that's coming later. A unit needs orders. Oh, you. No, we're just gonna... Let's move to here. Get out of the miasma. I want to... Yeah, okay. I want to get on this thing. I don't actually know what I'm supposed to do here. Anything? Nothing? Fortify until healed. It's just a cool thing. Maybe I can, if my city's near it, it can do stuff. Oh, we moved. Yay. Okay. Let's choose our production. I think Trade Depot would be good. And I think we're going to...
I'm worried if we attack this that it's going to make all these dudes mad at us. Because I don't want to aggro all the others. Oh, is that that big worm? Siege worm. That's my quest, is to defeat that siege worm. Okay. Okay. They don't seem to be mad with us. Are we a city now? We're a city, yay! Okay, let's start building stuff and then I think we are gonna let things go for now. Okay, we have a, uh, established a second colony and uh, we've got a siege worm to deal with. So yay for us. And I think that's a good place to stop. I'm going to save right here. And uh, we will catch you guys next time. Let me know what you think about this about this new game. Probably the next the next uh, sessions after this will be shorter. But you know, we're going to spend a good hour on this first one. So I really appreciate you tuning in and seeing this new to you, probably, version of Civilization. Thank you so much, everybody. And uh, take care.